I'm from Passive VR and today in this video I'm going to show you how to use Playmaker in combination with Instant VR version 3.3. 3.3 Advanced has a built-in Playmaker support and it will make a, the, the use of uh, avatars in virtual reality much easier to use with. Uh, without programming of course so I'm going to show you today a, uh, a number of uh, Techniques you can use with the first version of this, uh, this, uh, this implementation. So we are going to look at uh, walking around using uh, Playmaker, uh, how to deal with collisions with the environment. The new uh, gaze selection uh, is uh, shown to you in combination with the Unity event system. Grabbing options, uh, objects, how do you detect them, what are you grabbing, etc. And uh, I'm going to look into you, uh, look into uh, hand poses, so the positions and of the hand and the fingers. So uh, today I'm using a basic setup um, using rifts and Razor Hydra and Leap Motion. So uh, as you may know, Instant VR can deal with a number of uh, input devices, including those I listed. And for instance, Kinect is supported and. With 3.3, I also have Vico VR. I'm not going to look into those that will be dealt in other videos. So today I'm going to look at uh, Playmaker. We want to walk around the avatar with Playmaker. So the first thing I'm going to do is disable the built-in walking around of Instant VR. So here you have the script which is uh, added by default. And now we're going to disable walking and sidestepping. So now I can't control it directly from Instant VR because we want to do it with Playmaker. So here we have our avatar and we're going to add with Playmaker the state machine to it. So the default state we are going to use uh, call uh, move around. Oh. Move around because the avatar will be able to move around as you wish. Uh, to be able to move around we need to have uh, input. So that's basically already dealt with, uh, with within the standard edition of uh, Playmaker. So we go to the action browser and we go to the input section where we find get access vector which will get the input direction from a connected game controller for example and store it into a vector. So here we have the action and now we have to create a variable which can store the direction vector. So we have the movement direction that's a new variable and it will have type vector3. So now we can use that one to store the direction vector from the input device into this variable. Now we want to be able to use that vector to move our avatar around. So we go back to the action browser and we see there's a new section called Instant VR which automatically pops up when you have Playmaker and Instant VR Advanced installed. And we are going to use the action character move to move our character around. So basically the game object is the character we are going to move around, which is the, uh, the game object itself. And the movement vector is the variable we just created and get from the input controller. So if everything is correct now, and I think so it is, we should be able to move the character around by using the game controller. You can also see in the store vector that indeed the input is added entered using Playmaker. So now if we collide with the environment we want to be able to detect it. So there is the collision detection on, uh, on the, the characters but how do we get that into Playmaker? So first we, get, what we want to do is add another state which is called not state one but collided and we're going to add two events which is called character 
collision start number one and the second one is character collision end and the uh, character collision start is uh, triggered when we are uh, uh, colli colliding with the environment so now we have a transition from move around to collided when this event is triggered and similarly when we have collided and we move away from uh, the object we go we end the collision and we go back to the free walking around so this is basically our state very simple which should be able to do what we want um, yeah. so now we need to be able to trigger those events because they, those events are not just generated by magic we use an action for that and in the instant VR section we have the character collision for action so we're going to use that on the move around state to detect the collisions so we have the game objects it's still the avatar itself and the start event which is triggered when the collision is done then we have the character collision start and event is not used by the state did I use the transition event is ah I did it the other way around so I entered the wrong event from move around to collided so it was set to character collision end but because we need to use the start collision so now it's okay and when we go back from collided to move around that's triggered by the collision end event so now we add the character collision here again but now we just use the end event because the start event it cannot be triggered in this situation because we are already colliding so now it's basically done um, we can additionally store the collision state into a variable and uh, I want to add a new one, new one, which we will call collided. It's a boolean value, and add this one. And now we can store collided state here, and we need to do it here too. Okay, almost done. Uh, because there's one thing we need to do in the collided state, we cannot move around anymore because the the move character action is not there so we need to copy that from here to the new state and I just found out you can select those two and copy the selected actions and now we go back to the collided state and now we just right click and paste actions so now we have the same walk around actions and paste it into the collider state. If we don't do that, then we just collide and we cannot move, cannot move away from the object anymore. So we need this additionally. Um, okay, so now let's play. Let's see if it does what we want. Okay, so we move forward uh, towards the desk and bam. Now we are colliding and when we uh, walk back, collision ends. So that's exactly what we want to do well what you want to do furthermore is up to you uh, this is just showing you the basics um, next topic gay selection um, you may have noticed that there is already a, some some ball in the middle of the view and that's our focus point and let me show that when I go back to the avatar in the hierarchy I have here the I have after and the head tag a target and here you see event system and show focus point so when you uh, enable the focus point you will see the ball and it will help you to, to determine the point where it's looking at and the event system I will go into somewhat later uh, but it's a very convenient me a way to do something with the uh, uh, gay selection okay so you can also see that the focus point object is uh, is a sphere that's generated uh, by uh, by instant vr but the look transform is actually now 
the bruidsuikers, Dutch word for the candy. And actually, when you look around, you see that the look transform transforms into the object you're looking at. It's very convenient. You might be able to use that in the future. Um, but now, what we want to do is actually uh, just when you look at the chair on the left, there's a sign. And when you look at that, you see there are some events appearing in the console. Some de like debug rules. And actually when you look at it and you just press fire on the object, you can see... Oh, it's not very readable. I need to fix that in the first, next version. Uh, that the sign is moved towards your camera that uh, to, uh, to enable you to read the sign. So that's all done using the event system and scripting which we do not want in this situation. So when we go to the grocery store we find the sign here and here you see the event trigger which is actually doing this, this stuff for you. And the script attached to it is the uh, retrieve sign. So we're going to uh, remove that and going to remove everything after in fact and we're going to attach those triggers to Playmaker so that you can use uh, the gaze selection to your own good using Playmaker. So this sign will get a state machine and it will have two states again and this is just uh, passive it's just not doing anything and the second state we are going to use in this example is, uh, let's say, being looked at. Just like with the collision, we need some state changes for that. So we uh, define two events for that. Uh, look, uh, start. That's one event. And uh, look away that's the other event so we go from passive to being looked at when we have look start and we go back from being looked at back to passive when look away is triggered now okay that's a good uh, place to start with but now we want to attach the events of the gaze selection of the event system of Unity to the state machine. So what we need to do is use these event triggers which is built in in Unity and add an event which triggers uh, Playmaker for the state changes. So what we're looking at is the, the event pointer enter. This is basically when the focus point moves into the uh, collider, collider of the object. So that's basically the event we're going to use to trigger look start. Uh, let's see, so this is the trigger. Now what we're going to do depends on what the events what we are going to attach to it. Um, we're going to use this not just runtime but also in the editor because then I can show it to you in this video. Uh, the second, second one is the object which will receive this event which is uh, to keep things simple with just the sign itself. So the sign will uh, receive this event and now what we are going to do with it is call some function. And there are a lot of things built in into this situation, but what, what we are looking at is the Playmaker functions. And uh, in fact, even there is a lot of possibilities, but the thing which we are looking for is send event, because that will trigger an event to uh, trigger a state change. And which event are we going to send? Of course, look start event. Yeah, it's the look start event, so we enter look start here okay so now it should go from passive to being looked at and we want to go back to so we add another event which is actually pointer exit when the focus moves away from the object so everything is filled in from the previous one so editor runway the sign itself 
uh, send event but not look start in this case but look away so there we are that should do the trick now when we look you can see the state is passive at the moment and now when we look at the sign boom it goes back to being looked at and goes back so in this way you can use uh, the gate selection to trigger events from the event system of Unity into uh, Playmaker and do all kinds of incredible things with it where, when you look at objects etc. Okay, so that's gate selection. Now let's move to uh, grabbing objects because grabbing objects is always fun. It makes uh, virtual reality much more interest, uh, interesting I think so people always walk up to the sword so now to make things easier I will move the avatar towards the sword and what we want to do is detect when the avatar grabs, grabs the swords um, so we add another state to our state machine which is called uh, grab object so then when that state is entered we know that the object is grabbed okay so we need an event again from, to go from move around to grab the object so we add another event uh, which is uh, grab just to keep things simple and let go when the, the object is dropped again yeah so we go from move around to grab object grab to grab object and we have this event grab go to grab object and then in that situation when we let it go again we go back to move around so again it's a very simple state change which you can use uh, so now we have uh, the states and the events in place we need to add the event triggerer go back to the actions and now we're looking for hand grabbing and we add that action to the list of scripts okay now you can see that uh, the object is the hand object and it's a warning because actually we need to specify which of the hands are actually we are looking at uh, in this case we have two hands as we usually do, do but we need to say which of the two hands we are going to use so we go back to the hierarchy of the avatar and we see all kinds of targets so what the, the targets we are looking at is the left hand and the right hand target so in this case I'm right-handed so I have a preference for right hand so I move the right hand target onto my game object so we are uh, looking for triggers when the hand the right hand is all, uh, is uh, grabbing an object okay so what is the event when it is grabbed of course that's our grab uh, event which we defined earlier okay, we also have the grab object uh, entry which will tell you which object is being grabbed so we need in order to use that we need to define a variable and we will go call that the grabbed object and that will be a game object okay so there it is and we put it here so I could elaborate on that but basically this should do already what we want so let's start yes I grab my, I grab my Hydra and try to find where the yes there it is okay so now I'm grabbing the sword and you see the state change moved from move around to grab the object and actually when we go a look at the grab object you can almost see <laughs> see the sword handle prefab that is actually the the, uh, the object which has been grabbed and 
when we looked at the object itself. You see, this is the object which has been grabbed. This is actually the thing we grabbed, indeed. So when I drop it, there it goes. We go back to the avatar and go back to the script. You see, it's still there. Okay, I need to look into that. Okay, because that, that's because uh, we didn't define the, the let's go uh, event. But I think you will uh, understand how, how the things are moving. Um, the last thing I want to look at is the hands pose because you can do interesting things using uh, looking at the pose of the hands, especially when you use the, the leap motion. And I hope it will work today, this time because it is a bit flaky these uh, these days. Okay, so I add the action browser again, and there is a get hands pose action and again here you should ch uh, choose which hands you are looking at again I take the right hand target and use it oh sorry I need to specify game object and now I can drop it on yep right hand to a target and we have five values which are actually float, float values which can store the position of the, each finger so you can define five floats from the index finger and this very quickly middle finger the ring finger and the little finger so these five floats we are going to use to store the values of uh, thumb index middle ring and uh, there it is little finger so it doesn't matter actually now which input device you're going to use but i'm going to try uh, to use uh, my lip motion this time so start and play there it is and again it's not working this time so i can use already the Hydra, I will restart my uh, leap motion and you can also already see that the values of the thumb and index can be driven by the Hydra. And you can see the values changing in the inspectors but I also want you to show you the leap motion so I disconnect it and hope it will come back I really have to look into that. And now it's back. And if I'm not mistaken, it should now work. Play. Ah, there it is. There it is. Now you can see all the positions of the fingers are independently tracked. So. You can do all kinds of interesting things with that. That's your imagination. Uh, thing is, uh, I added the Playmakers uh, a support in Instant VR 3.3 in the advanced version. Um, I hope you can do useful things with it. If you find things you want to do and you cannot do, just contact me because I'm very willing to help you in your project and to get the most out of uh, uh, the things you want to do in, in virtual reality. Uh, so I'm very interested in looking at your uh, results and uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens in the future. Okay, thank you and uh, see you around uh, in the next video or something like that. Bye.